Hey guys, Rebecca here with Holy Rustic, um, where we do all things DIY. And it is time for our BOGO painting of the month. So you all voted to have our Nuts About Fall acorn door hanger as your Craft and Connect um, kit of the month. So we've shipped out lots of acorns and hopefully you all are painting with us tonight or able to join us with um, your kits. So the first thing we're gonna do is just jump right in to the back Piece. So you have several layers to this door hanger. Let me know if you're painting or watching or what you're doing. And um, let me know if you have the kit or if you just want to see what it's all about. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this top part here and I'm going to leave this bottom part on just so that I can um, mark what I'm going to paint with my light brown color. So I'm just going to take a big brush and dip in the light brown which you got in your kit and I'm just gonna go along the top here right where that meets and I'm just gonna do a quick um, stroke right where that ends now I know what my brand what is brown and what is blue so I'll just move this out of the way and putting all the 3d pieces to the side and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the top so it is the last day of September that we fit in our, our live BOGO before October hits. I feel like this month has just flown by. <clears throat> but that means that it is time to vote, almost time to vote, on the October BOGO of the month. So probably within the next three or four days, we'll have all of those kits posted for you to vote on our new BOGO for October. Hey Pat, how are you? Um, and in fact, we have a lot of fun things coming up in October, so I'm really excited about it. Fall is my favorite, and I want to do all the things. So we have fun classes, we have fun kits, we have fun subscription boxes planned contest in our craft kit group and even a Halloween paint class so stay tuned lots of stuff <laughs> what's gold oh good <laughs> yeah I think it's gonna be a fun month in fact I think the rest of the year is gonna be fun just because you know so many holidays to craft for all right so we just did a base base coat of that light brown and since we marked it I know that the bottom is going to be um, the light blue which also came in this kit but I will tell you you don't have to paint the same colors that I do so you could in fact someone in our um, craft kit group already posted her picture that she painted and she did this bottom part dark brown and I thought it was really pretty so that is an option you don't have to use the light um, blue color that you got in your kit and I don't even think I'm using the same colors <laughs> you got it's close but not the same this is mint chocolate chip Does anybody like mint chocolate chip ice cream every time I see that I think of ice cream all right so I'm just gonna again do a base coat not pretty I love this color right across the bottom. Now, this part where they touch is not going to be seen. That's gonna be covered up by um, our wood pieces, so I am not concerned at all about what that looks like. So this is just gonna be a quick base coat. <clears throat> so, yeah, we have um, this is the last day you can use the promo code ACORN, so make sure to order your BOGO if you want this uh, Nuts About Fall kit. And then um, also the last day to join the Tier Trade Club in time for the Halloween set. And the last day to join our Creative Outlet box, which we haven't said much about lately because we've been so busy we need to do an unboxing again so y'all can see what's in it but we um, are about to send out our 
September kit and it is loaded because I already said I love the holidays so I have a hard time reeling it in when it comes to the holidays and I just keep adding more and more stuff to the box <laughs> so if you want that surprise box make sure you sign up for creative outlet today to get the October box it is going to be a lot of fun so <clears throat> Anybody decorated for fall yet? I know you may have seen my, um, I guess it's a gourd. I guess that's what it's called. I don't know if it's a gourd or a squash. But anyways, it looks like a swan, and I'm obsessed with it. It is so cute. So we stopped at the little pumpkin stand, and they had lots of different fall decorations. And Okay, so these are... <clears throat> the two colors that are on the base of my example again this bottom part looks really pretty with a dark brown too so we're just gonna let that dry while we go ahead and base all our other colors and we do have two big leaves and one of them is going to be that same mint the blue which mine is mint chocolate chip but I don't think yours is um, and then one of them is gonna be orange <clears throat> So it's just kind of fun to throw in some different colors with the fall colors. <clears throat> Speaking of um, holiday decor, we uh, have our class tomorrow out at Forest Edge Winery where we're painting the holiday porch leaners. Oh, they're so pretty on a porch. I love it. It's one of my favorite leaners to do but there is no more room in the class it's full but um I think we have them in our Etsy shop though finished but they're 3D porch leaners too I do everything with my wood cutouts so all right so we have one blue leaf and we're going to do one orange leaf and we can start uh, painting our top layer too. So what do y'all think? Do you like the blue or do you think there should be another color instead? I'm just gonna use the same brush I was using because we are gonna end up brushing some of those colors in to each piece. So we're gonna kinda tie in the blue and the orange to um, all of the pieces. And orange is a little bit harder to cover when you just paint directly on the wood without any kind of base coat it was hot here today I am ready for fall weather <laughs> we've had a couple cool days but mostly we're still having these blazing hot days I'm ready for fall weather <laughs> hi Rosemary yes this is the acorn kit <clears throat> this is the September uh, BOGO of the month. <clears throat> we barely squeezed it in since today's the 30th, but um, yep, it's almost time to vote for October. <laughs> but here we are. We're going to paint our acorn. That's about fall. So we've got the um, bottom base layer done. We've got our leaves done. And now we can do our um, top pieces. And then we'll go back and kind of brush in all the colors to make it tie together. So here, um, since we did our bottom layer a light blue, I'm gonna do this top layer in a darker. It's not blue, it's more like a teal. In fact, I think it's turquoise is the name of it. <clears throat> but again, you could do these in any colors you want. Thank you, Rosemary. It's a fun one to paint. I love all things fall anyways, so the best time <clears throat> we've been cutting um mini acorns and they are so adorable i don't think i have any any here i'd show you I don't... yeah we've been cutting these little bitty mini acorns as like vase vase fillers or jar fillers um acorns and leaves so so cute <clears throat> Acorns and scarecrows are like my thing this season. I don't know if it's the actual thing, but it's my thing. 
lots of scarecrow stuff and lots of uh, acorns. And usually it's pumpkin. Of course, I'm all about pumpkin spice. Like I am the cliche when it comes to pumpkin spice. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Double doors. I didn't even think about that. That would be perfect. Yeah, matching matching set for both doors. Yeah, the reason that we started um, the BOGO like, uh, is um, because, you know, after a year of isolation, we just wanted a way for people to be able to get together and craft and paint. So we did it as like a craft and connect thing. But... Of course, with the BOGO, I mean, there's so many things. You don't have to have a girls' night. You can, um, you know, paint and sell one or paint and give one as a gift. They make great gifts. Or double doors now. I didn't even think about that one, so that's perfect. Scarecrows on your porch. That's awesome. We've got lots of uh, scarecrow, scarecrow kits and classes and paintings and... It's, that seems to be what I'm gravitating towards. I should put scarecrows on my porch, too. That is a good idea. I really need to step up my um, outside decor <laughs> game. I, always, I mean, I planned on going all out and decorating and picked up some things, but they haven't made it out there. Like, I have good um, intentions. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can have them all for yourself, Rosemary. That is just fine. So. But, yeah, I've never had double front doors. I, I, I guess that's why I didn't think about it being perfect for that. Okay, so we just did the base coat on that. That's all we're doing for all these pieces right now. Um, lots of pieces just to get the base coats on. Um, this that's about fall is going to go on top of the whole door hanger. So this is the third layer. And I'm going to show you right in the center. I know it looks a little funny, right? But right in the center we have the letters. So this is actually the fourth layer. So this is... Um, a lot of layers on this kit but I want to when I do these little pieces and especially for like our tiered tray club I always use a strip of painters tape so you can use masking tape or um, frog tape just flip it upside down sticky side up and stick your letters to it and that way you can paint it without them moving all over the place so I love to use painters tape to hold my little pieces down so this center is going to be um, brown for me. You can make it whatever color you want. Yeah, you're ahead of the game. That's awesome. Maybe I'll get there again one day. I used to be, you know, I used to be all over it, but now I'm busy making kits and designing different things for fall, and my porch gets goes to the back burner, and that's okay because I love this too. Um. But, yeah. You should uh, post a picture. I think we have a post on our Facebook page about have you decorated yet. You should show us your scarecrows because that is my thing right now. Do you see we have um, a huge, huge door hanger. It's, um, it's like 24 inches just for the scarecrow. And then there's a welcome sign hanging off of it. So, it's, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying, trying to rock it. <laughs> it's, um, I think once you put the hanger on it, depending on how far down you put the welcome sign, um, it could be two and a half feet tall for your front door. So there's definitely no hiding it. You could see it from the street. It's really the biggest one we've ever done. fun yeah compared to this one it's huge but uh yeah so if you do um if y'all do have the bogo kit and you paint it make sure to post it in the craft kit group uh we've already seen one of these done i think one there may be more but it was really pretty she did a really good job so that's the group where we share kits finished kits and it's fun 
for me to see everybody's um, different, unique cre creativity. So usually things do not look the same. <laughs> Even though we're doing the same kit and same instructions, they all look different and I love that. That's one of my favorite things about doing this is seeing everybody else's ideas and um, creativity. Uh, this one is 18 inches. So as of now, most of our ra like round shapes we keep at around 18 inches. We can do bigger, but <clears throat> or smaller. So we can do custom sizes too, but um, just generally we keep our kits around 18. I don't know what it was about the scarecrow. I just wanted to go big, <laughs> so I'll take up three fourths of your door. <laughs> or your double doors. <laughs> so, okay, base coat on that. I'm gonna do um, the about in orange, so I'll just go ahead and do that while it's here. <clears throat> this is really a fairly simple um, kit to paint because it's just ba base colors and then we just do some dry brushing over top to get all the colors tied together, so. I think we um, might have some Christmas options, some more Christmas options. We already have quite a few, but we'll just gradually kind of phase out the Halloween kits and, and sneak in some Christmas on you. We'll be like the uh, retail stores that have that Christmas in front of you super early. Does anybody start Christmas shopping? <laughs> I have. I think it's probably the earliest I've ever started shopping for Christmas. But I will be honest, most of it's because um, anytime I go out with one of my kids now and they want something, I'm like, well, you want it for Christmas? <laughs> they're like, yeah, that's fine. So they're old enough, I guess they're basically picking their Christmas presents. So they don't get it until Christmas, but I've got a lot of them done already just from that. It's not quite as much fun once they grow up. Okay, so again, that painter's tape makes it a lot easier. I don't get paint all over my, well, I do, but I don't get as much paint. <laughs> I'm a messy painter, so I always have paint all over me. All right, this is the last piece that needs a base coat. So you could do this all in one color, or you could um, split and do different colors up to you. The example we have is um, in brown and orange. So I'll just take a round brush and I'm just gonna go around real quick on the outside. <clears throat> so I'm just using a dark brown. You know, the, um, the kit, the way it comes, says nuts about fall, but you could even put, you know, um, a monogram in the middle, like your last name or your full name if you had that, if you were able to get that done. But you know, you can buy those single letters that like Hobby Lobby or I don't think the dollar store has those, but um, the craft stores, you know, you could put a big letter in the middle of your door hanger or you could even uh, buy, uh, you know, like the dollar store I think does have like welcome so you don't have to put the nuts about fall either. You could also switch up the saying that is on your door hanger. <laughs> I think I'm about to have a cat in my lap. I know y'all seen our, our studio uh, kitty rumple. Hi, Erica. Thank you. Um, he's super needy. So anytime I'm in the studio, he wants to be like right in my face or in my lap. So, you know, he, <laughs> he helps. <laughs> he definitely keeps things fun and interesting. 
I try to tie my apron on to paint. He attacks the strings and pulls it right off. He knocks all my wood pieces off the table. <laughs> Swats it around the room. <clears throat> oh, I don't know if, <laughs> if you're in my group. You know, it's glitter season for me. I love all things glitter and gold and metallic, in the, especially for the holidays. And I was going to a class a couple weeks ago I guess and I had a big um, one of those big containers of the white glitter like the snow kind of looking glitter to take to class and it was full but I forgot that I had cut off my um all right so I'm gonna do these stripes now I'm gonna do one brown and one orange so I'm just gonna skip every other one but anyways I forgot that for some reason I had cut the plastic lid off the top of it and um yeah i bent over because i dropped something and that lid came off and that whole large bottle of glitter fell into the studio carpet and it's not even all carpeted so it was unluck unlucky <clears throat> and i had to leave it because i had to go to class well when i came back <laughs> cats had moved that glitter all over the room so the studio floor is as ready for the holidays as i am <laughs> it's very sparkly even after multiple um cleanup attempts but that's okay good thing i love glitter right Yeah, one of uh, one of my girls, my employee that was working today, she, she was like, "Oh, come here! You got glitter on your face." I was like, "Uh, just leave it there. I wear it for months. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You take that one off, there'll be more in its place. I know it will glitter forever. I don't think it's ever gonna be gone, but uh, that's okay." It just makes it look more like a craft studio, right? I mean, is it really even a craft room if there's not glitter somewhere? <laughs> uh. So, yeah, it was kind of funny, though, because the cats wore glittery, too, for a while. I think they've finally licked themselves clean. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they were pretty sparkly, too. So... But anyways, makes uh, life interesting. All right, so again, I'm just painting every other one. And then I'm going to go back and do every, the rest of them. Um, I'm trying to remember how I did it. So I'll do the rest of them in the orange. So we do need to do... Um, what was that? No. One, two. Okay. So the one's going the opposite direction. We need to do that too. So the darker brown you use, the less likely it is that you'll need to um, do a second coat. You can mix it with a little bit of black if you want to, to darken it up some. If you're planning on painting your BOGO different colors, let me know. <clears throat> what colors would you do it? This is definitely the most tedious part of this door hanger, is just getting um, all of the stripes done. <clears throat> let me show y'all what I'm using. This is my new favorite thing. <clears throat> And I showed my members the other day because I'm just so impressed. But it's this, um, so I usually use like paper plates or um, the plastic uh, little trays. But I got this at the Dollar Tree. And these are tear off papers with 15 sheets. And I just put my paint on it and use it all day. And then I just rip it off and throw it away. It is the most amazing thing right now. I'm so in love <laughs> because it's like a slick surface so it doesn't bleed through 
and the cleanup is so much easier <clears throat> and um, well it's a lot easier than the plastic trays for sure but I'm really loving it and next time I go to the Dollar Tree I'm gonna stock up so y'all should look next time you're there actually has anybody been to the Dollar Tree lately they have um, of course put out some Christmas stuff and I found these little snow globes the other day they're so super cute and they have these little um like domed ornaments where you can you know decorate them up like little snow globes and hang them on the tree or they have the ones that stand so man Dollar Tree has a lot of stuff for crafters now and not all of it is great and or quality but for cute little quick projects perfect <clears throat> you know i think it would be cute to leave um part of that natural too i like that natural color but it might blend in with the background too what do you think what color should be with the um brown all right so now I just have our orange left and with this you probably want to be a little more careful and um, right along the edges so that's why I'm just using a round brush and again I just kind of um with the side of my brush I kind of just take it down the the center to try to avoid a bunch over on the sides. So we have these laser cut edges and you don't have to um, paint those. In fact, you really don't want to paint those on a piece like this because it'll take forever. So this part, you have to be a little more careful. Oh, oh, that reminds me because I was thinking, um, we really don't do shows or anything anymore. So stuff like this that I jump on here and do just real quickly um, gets piled up in our de-stash pile. So if you um, have been part of our de-stash before, you know that we have a lot of examples like this and um, even like slightly imperfect kits that we don't wanna ship out. So that is coming up in just a few weeks. It's like the third week of October maybe. Um, and it's inside a private group and we do it twice a year. <clears throat> so once you join that group, you're in it unless you remove yourself and you'll be there for both um, the spring and the fall D stash. But we put all of our, like our overstock craft supplies and um, class examples, live examples like this, all of that stuff goes into our D stash. And um, a lot of times things like this, we don't actually glue them down and we don't seal them or anything. So they're, um, they're repaintable. So you can, you know, buy it at a big discount and then repaint it if you want it. So Make sure if you're not already in that group to get in that group because we have lots of stuff to sell. I don't even know how we accumulate so much stuff in six months. Isn't it amazing what you can accumulate in such a short amount of time? It just <laughs> just blows my mind. Like we literally just did this a, you know, a few months ago in the spring and had a ton of stuff. And I'm like, I can barely move now. or just so overloaded, so. I always look forward to the de-stash even though it's a lot of work because it's really like an online yard sale and if you've done a yard sale you know that it's a lot of work but it's so nice to kind of oh, yep got paint on me it's so nice to um kind of clean up a little bit clean house and making a mess well that's typical. <laughs> I don't think I have any clothes anymore that aren't painted on. You know you're a, a creative win, right? Always covered in paint or glitter. <laughs> I 
what do y'all want to see for the BOGO? What do you think it's going to be? Christmas or fall? I'm always curious what y'all are going to pick. Because, like, last, was it last month we did, was it the Joy Leaner last month? So, we had a Christmas BOGO before we even had a um, fall BOGO. <laughs> But we leave it up to y'all. Y'all get to pick what you want to paint. <clears throat> so, so we just got a couple more weeks with the Halloween, um, the Halloween stuff out. I feel like I'm making a mess here. So when you paint this, um, again, any of them might need a second coat. That's up to you if you want to go back and do that. I probably won't just because, you know, I don't want you to have to watch me do second coats on these. But if you think it's a little too translucent, you can put a second coat. However, we are going to be dry brushing on top of these colors and that will cover up some of that translucency especially you know like the orange is pretty translucent when you just paint it straight onto the wood with no base could always throw some some glitter in your acorn too. Like the let it snow. A lot of our door hangers um, for the holidays I use um, glitter on the like center pieces on the words. Which reminds me I need to pack up some glitter for our class tomorrow because I believe I did that on the porch leaner. Okay, so if you want to do two colors, it takes a little bit um, more time, but it really will stand out against that background. So let's check on that. So again, when we did this um, in the background, it's just a quick base coat and I did not worry about my lines at all because that's going to be covered up once we glue these on top of it. Well, hopefully, let me see. So make sure you can't see that. Yeah, it's good. And then um, what we're gonna do, so before we start adding our pieces on and gluing our pieces, I'm going to dry brush white and um, some of the darker blue and maybe a little bit of orange throughout the board. So I'm just gonna get a small flat brush And if you haven't dry brushed before, what you're going to do is dip it into the paint and then you are going to wipe off the excess. So you want almost a dry brush. That's where that comes from. So I dipped it in the white and I'm going to dry that off and then I'm just going to streak. So just really lightly, maybe I, just in random places and I will especially around the edges, but we just want very subtle hints in the background to show through the, um, the holes in the top layer. I might need a bigger brush for that background. All right. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the, um, the top turquoise color too and just kind of brush that in as well. You could also do orange. You could do whatever colors you wanted. Like I said, this is just going to show through that background or the top layer. So you really just cannot mess this up. Now, if you get too much of any one color on there, just dip back in your brown and go over it a little bit there. You could also, and I think I told you this before. Okay, so see how we have those subtle um, hints 
of color in the background. So you put however much you want to put on that. If you want more of one color, just add it. Just play around with it until you get it the way you like it, basically. Got a big glob. All right, so that'll be going on top of there. All right, and then um, we're gonna do at least the white on the bottom, and I'm gonna use a bigger brush for that. All right, so a little white and dab it off. There, see? That's a little better. So I'm using um, a bigger door hanger. So a lot of times when I do examples, I make minis <laughs> so that they're easier. You know, I don't have a bunch of full-sized examples laying around, but and for the bigger door hangers, a bigger brush is going to be better. And I'm just dipping, dabbing, dipping and dabbing for the dry brush. And you can just put as much or as little as you want on here. And I'm getting it on my um, the top part, but that's okay. I'm going to put just a little bit of the blue through there. So you really won't be able to see that very well, but that's okay. Get some more white. So dip and dab. I'm going to go back over this a little bit. So see how that was not dry enough? So I'll just take some brown, go right back over it. Okay, you could also take a baby wipe and just smooth it in. Baby wipes are my thing for sure. I have them near at all times. I may even put a little bit of orange in the background. I mean, you could get this really messy if you wanted to. So don't be scared to add color. Okay. Now we're going to put these pieces on top. I'm going to dry brush some white on that. And just make sure you stay consistent with your strokes, either up and down or side to side. Um, not both. So dip, dab, and I'm just gonna brush it over kind of the whole thing. Make sure it's really dry. You get that kind of um, rustic, weathered look here. So it really um, tones down that color and makes it look more antique, I guess you would say. So dip it, dab it, brush it. See, isn't that so much better than just, you know, plain um, single color? It just really makes a difference when you just little things make big differences on your projects. You can get a little more around the edges, kind of bring that in. All right, so there's our weathered acorn. We need to do the same thing with the leaves. So I'm just doing the white on the top pieces. So I did the teal and the orange on the bottom pieces. I don't know if you can see that or not. All now, when you glue these down, you have the E6000. Um, just make sure that you remember that a little goes a long way. So if you use too much glue on the backs of your pieces, you're gonna end up with oozing glue out the sides and that's gonna show on your board and it won't look very good. Um, so when I use the E6000, I usually 
Um, put, you can put it on like a plastic knife or a palette knife first and then kind of smear it like you would peanut butter on the back and that really helps control um, the amount of glue and prevent some of that oozing out the side. So I'm just going around the edges here more. Um, and then you could also use a Q-tip to smooth out the um, glue that's on the back of the pieces. So the thinner it is, the less likely you're gonna have um, problems with your glue. So just make sure to remember that. And then the, the glue you get in your kit does not set right away. So you want to um, paint it or glue it and then lay it flat in for a couple hours until it completely sets. Because if you glue it and then like hang it on your door, probably you're gonna go back to your pieces laying in the floor because they're gonna slide right off if it's upright. So make sure to keep it flat until it's completely dry so that you don't have to redo anything. Okay, so see how that just looks kind of weathered. All right, so these holes, you're gonna line up the, um, the holes on the leaves. Let me see how I did it. So this way, we'll do it this way and then just tie that through one of those holes at the top of the acorn here, okay? And we are almost done. So we're just going to do the letters. So you don't have to glue the leaves unless you want to. You're gonna tie them with your twine um, and then you can glue them down if you want them to stay in a certain place, but you don't have to. All right, so I'm gonna move these a little bit more. We're gonna center this on the bottom. We're gonna brush some white onto the edges. Just real quick dry brush. And then our about, same thing. We're almost done. that tape trick. You should use it. It's uh, great for letters. All right, and then um, you're just going to glue everything on just like this. So your letters fit into the center of between about and fall or nuts and fall. So you just glue it. Use a q-tip to spread that glue right on the back of the letters. And then don't push it down super hard. The less you can get it to ooze, the better it's gonna be for your kit. And the T. All right. Okay, there's our nuts about fall in blue and brown. So I'd love to see yours when you're done. Um, try different colors, see what you can come up with and uh, be ready to vote for the October BOGO of the month. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Have a great evening.